and I know it's a, a bit cliche and perhaps overplayed maybe just in my circle, but the, the saying is so good that resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. That's and I, Nelson I, Mandela's statement. Mm, beautiful. And yeah, yeah I mean, I know. Gosh, what a, what a, well, it, resentment is like drinking poison and then waiting for your enemy to die. Mm. Home run statement. It's just <laughs> what so many people need to hear. Um, can you share with me what has been one of the hardest things that you have personally had to forgive in your life? You know, there, there's you, you can't get to this age without having had a number of, of things that just have to be overcome. I, I'll start easily with the, the reason that I became a forgiveness teacher. And that's because a very close friend abandoned me decades ago. And somebody who was central to my life, and they just, you know, walked out. And um, took a number of years to for me to make any peace out of it. Um, but I did, and we're now the absolute best of friends again. Mm. And, and that taught me much of what I needed to learn about forgiveness. I mean, it was, it was a devastating experience for me at the time that um, you know, somebody who had been a, a, my, just an absolute best buddy and, you know, things in life shifted and he did this and that and the other thing. And then five years later, we came back together and I had cleansed my heart and we I don't think we've had a speed bump since, but mm. it was all, all internal. Mm. More challenging later in life was certain experiences that happened with my in-laws. Um, I, I had a long, successful marriage, but um, relationship with her parents was very challenging. And there were a couple of times where she and I fought like crazy, either going to her parents' house or coming back from her parents' house. And, it, and we ended up expressing a lot of negativity between us because at that time we felt no capacity to deal with them. I mean, again, another displacement. Um, but the... The quality that, that I write about in the book called Positive Intention, that came to me a while ago. Not When I, I went to visit her parents and her mother said something that just irritated the hell out of me. And I went storming out their back door and I went running and I didn't come back for like two hours. And she figured I had come, I gone back to California and left them. And, and, and I was furious for, I don't know, 45 minutes. And then I started to realize this is pretty stupid. But, you know, like she's mother in law. And yeah, she's difficult and irritating and all those things. And but she's your mother in law. So I asked myself, this is um, how this came, and this was after I had been teaching this for probably a decade. I can't know, but you know, some, the clarity of it. But I asked myself, so why do you visit your in-laws? You don't like them. And they don't like you. So why do you visit? You certainly don't visit to get pissed off all the time. Well, maybe that's why you do visit, because that appears to be what happens. So maybe that's what you want. And, and a friend of mine gave me some real, like, wake up one time because I called them from where my in-laws lived, and I said, you won't believe what my mother-in-law did. And he said, of course I do. You call up and complain about her every time you go visit. <clears throat> so, you know, they all got the, the repetitive pattern of it except me. So I asked myself, like, what is it? Why do you go? And I realized that I go to support my wife 
and help my kids like have a relationship with their grandparents. So then the very unpleasant and uncomfortable thought came to me, well then Fred, why don't you act like that? So if you wanted your wife to feel supported, storming out over her mother is not gonna get you there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not always about you. So you're gonna to have to be nicer to her and you're gonna to have to give your kids a hell of a lot better model of how to behave because they're just learning how dad's a jerk. And so I had to change myself because my true motivation was support my wife and try to give my kids a decent relationship to the grandparents. Mm. But it required me to change my story from my mother-in-law is a pain in the ass to I'm here for positive reasons. She's difficult. It's fine. You know, Rose has its thorns. But I took her out of the center of the story and put the appropriate thing at the center of the story. And that, that, that's when the forgiveness teaching got more powerful, mm. was when I could teach other people to do that too. So not to just focus on what you don't like and don't want, but focus on what your positive goal is. Mm. So that, that's a very instructive experience for me because I was unable to control myself in their presence. I mean, I just, I, I didn't have any governors and I complained about them all the time. And, you know, a good part of it was justified, but it, it was the wrong question I was asking myself. So that, those, those are two you know, instructive moments for me on the power of forgiveness, because once I change that story, well, so she's annoying, so what? 